Though he is only in his 20s, T.J. Muller has been fascinated by music from the 1920s since he was a boy. I can remember my mum singing the tune Babyface to me. Uh, you know, uh, let's see. Babyface, you've got the cutest little, you know, <laughs> that, that, that one. I'm up in heaven when I'm in your warm embrace. It is no coincidence that Babyface is in the repertoire of the Arcadia Dance Orchestra because its founder, conductor, musical director, coronet player, and star crooner are all T.J. Muller. I felt that it would be incredibly fun to try and put together a group that could, as authentically as possible, recreate that music with the ambition of having a 11-piece orchestra playing regularly in St. Louis, playing the exact same sort of music and repertoire that you could expect to hear in St. Louis if you were to tra travel back in time. TJ named his orchestra for the Arcadia Ballroom in Midtown St. Louis, which later became a bowling alley and eventually a parking lot after old-timey jazz went out of fashion. But TJ's affection for it has never faded. The 1920s to me just represents a fascinating time in musical advancement in America, in artistic advancement and, uh, and creativeness. We were moving out of the old world and into the new. You may have detected by now, TJ is not from St. Louis. He grew up in England, playing music starting at the age of five. And then one day, when he was 20, he met a band leader touring the UK who happened to be in need of a trumpet player. His name was Pokey Lafarge, and TJ went on to tour with Pokey's St. Louis-based band for three years. And that is how TJ fell in love with St. Louis. Today, he lives on the South Side, working out of a living room that looks a little bit like a TGI Fridays. There's something about the underdog, isn't there, which is always, uh, <laughs> which is always interesting. Um, and I think St. Louis has always been an underdog in, in terms of the, uh, the narrative of music history. TJ began promoting the city's musical heritage first with a group called the Gaslight Squares and now with the Arcadia Dance Orchestra. At some of their performances, people really do dance. Ultimately, there's a selfish reason for why I put this all together as well. It's because I wanted to play in an orchestra and no other orchestra would hire me, <laughs> so, so I had to put my own together. Though TJ had very little formal music training, he met and has been mentored by local jazz legend Bill Mason, still playing his coronet at age 90. And with the help of this old book, TJ learned to transcribe tunes from old records and rearrange old charts to fit the sound of his orchestra. He even built a few instruments to help recreate that 1920s sound. I'm trying to make that music more and more specific to St. Louis as well. I'm trying to add tunes which I have strong evidence that St. Louis bands were regularly performing and playing, and, uh, and furthermore trying to find tunes composed by St. Louisans. <laughs> that last song was Ozark Mountain Blues, that recorded in 1929 by the Missourians. Uh, the Missourians did start right here in St. Louis. If somebody had an afternoon snack in St. Louis, I'm going to claim that. <laughs> Arcadia Dance Orchestra, happy days really are here again. Thanks to all those old songs about tootsies and moochers and sweethearts that really did rhyme moon, spoon, and June. You know, music with sax appeal. It can totally transcend age groups. It's quite special. It happened and it's not being remembered. And um, I think that it deserves to be remembered. I'll see how far I can push it before I fly too close to the sun.